Isang mapagpalang araw po sa inyong lahat. Nais ko pong ipaalam sa inyo na sa darating na October 5 ay tuloy na tuloy na po ang ating pasukan. At nais ko rin pong ipabatid sa inyo na ang napili nating learning delivery mode ay blended distance learning. Bakit po napili ng ating paaralan ito? Ito po yung resulta ng survey na isinagawa ng ating paaralan na kung saan tinanong namin kayo kung ano ang learning delivery mode na gusto ninyong i-apply natin ngayong panuruan at ngayong sitwasyong mayroon tayo. 36% po sa inyo ang sumagot na gusto niyo ng online learning at 35% po sa inyo ay sumagot na gusto niyo ng modular learning. So with those data at hand, we combine the two. Kaya tayo po ay nagkaroon ng blended distance learning. Marami pong kabutihan ang blended distance learning. Ang una-una pong nakikita natin dyan ay talagang masusukat natin ang pagkatuto ng ating mga anak. Dahil sa blended distance learning o sa online learning ay magkakaroon tayo ng screen-to-screen -screen classes no? na kung saan ay magkaroon ng interaksyon ang inyong mga anak sa kanyang guro at sa kanyang mga kaklase. At matatanong ang inyong mga anak kung talagang natuto sila doon sa mga lessons na sinagutan nila sa kanilang mga modules. Pangalawa pong nakikita nating advantage ng blended distance learning ay talagang madedevelop natin yung communication skills ng inyong mga anak na kung saan dyan kilala ang ating paaralan at ang ating mga mag-aaral. Pangatlo po uh, na nakikita nating advantage ng blended distance learning ay talagang maitataas natin yung antas ng pagkatuto, yung antas yung standard of learning ng ating mga anak. Bakit ko po nasabi yan? Dahil hindi po lingid sa lahat na ang modules po na ginawa ng ating division ay para po sa mga regular schools. At alam naman po ninyo na ang ating paaralan ay nag offer ng curriculum ng isang science high school. Dahil po dyan, nais po nating i-maintain yung standard ng ating paaralan. Kaya through online learning ay maitataas ng mga teachers yung standard ng lesson. No? May mga activities silang ibibigay o may mga worksheets silang ibibigay sa inyong mga anak upang sa ganun ma-maintain natin yung standard ng ating paaralan. So yun yung mga nakikita nating advantages ng blended distance learning. Huwag po kayong mag-alala. No? Dahil susundin natin yung ang mga nakatakdang oras na dapat lamang gugulin ng isang bata, depende sa kanyang edad, sa harap ng computers. Sa mga magitan po ng schedules na ginawa ng ating pamunuan, ibibigay po namin ito sa inyong mga anak at kanila pong susundin. At sa magitan po nito, masusunod natin yung mga nakatakdang oras. Muli po, hinihiling ko ang inyong aktibong partisipasyon at ang inyong 100% na suporta sa ating paaralan. Huwag po kayong mag-alala na sa kabila po ng hamon ng panahon, sa kabila po ng hamon ng sitwasyon, patuloy po nating hubugin ang ating mga anak. Patuloy po nating hubugin ang ating mga anak at patuloy po nating ibibigay ang dekalidad na edukasyon para sa kanila. Maraming salamat po. May mga videos po kaming ibibigay sa inyo. Sa mga videos po na ito ay mapapanood niyo yung mga prosesong dapat ninyong sundin. No? Sa pagkuha ng modules, pagdating sa bahay, ano yung inyong mga titingnan, ano yung inyong mga sasalutan, paano ba gagawin yung screen-to-screen -screen classes, ano yung mga proseso, at pagkatapos nyo sagutan yung modules, paano nyo ibabalik sa kanilang mga advisors yung mga modules na inyong nakuha, at paano kayo makakakuha ng mga next modules. So, pagtyagaan nyo po, please, na panoorin yung mga modules, ah, mga videos na ibibigay namin sa inyo. Maraming salamat po, magandang araw sa inyong lahat, at pagpalain tayo ng buong may kapo. Bye! Welcome to the Puerto Princesa City National Science High School Pre-Opening of Classes Orientation. For today, we are going to talk about number one, module distribution protocol. Second, the psychological first aid module. Next, we will talk about the weekly home learning plan. 
Then we'll proceed with the Google Meet protocol and the group chat protocol. And finally, the online class protocol. Are you all ready? Just like what our beloved principal had said, City Science High School will use the blended distance learning. So it is a combination of the modular learning delivery and the online learning delivery. Now let's talk about the module distribution and retrieval protocol. Paano nyo po makukuha at maibabalik ang mga modules dito sa ating paaralan? Panoorin po natin ito. Learning 
Nay, may load ba to? May load po ba tayo? Meron tayong load ka na. Sigyan kita ng pagdaring para isa ba yung mga pang ikaw ay nag-aalar. Nay. Nay, wala na atang load. Wala internet. Double-check mo yung connection. Gawin mo, isibo lahat ng pinapagawa dun sa weekly learning plan mo para magawa mo mamaya pag nagkaroon na tayo ng group. Okay. Gawin mo na rin. Good morning, ma! Good morning, ma! Yan, tapos po, pwede na pong kunin yung kanyang motor for weekly. Ah, sige po, thank you, ma'am. At ganyan nga po ang ating mga patakaran sa pagkuha at pagbalik ng ating mga modules. Bigyan pa si naman natin ngayon ang Psychological First Aid Modules. Ito po ay gagamitin ngayong linggo. Ibibigay po ito bukas. Kaya inaanyayahan po namin ang mga magulang na pumunta po rito sa umaga para po makuha itong 2020 Online and Self-Guided PFA Modules. Ito po ay isang module na kung saan Tinatalakay dito ang psychological first aid na dapat ay ibinibigay sa ating mga kabataan. Dahil ngayon po, hindi naman po natin uh, itinatanggi na lahat po ay nakakaranas ng mga uh, depression, ng stress, gawa ng nangyayaring pandemya. So ito po ay lupon ng mga modules na kinakailangang sagutan ng ating mga estudyante at ibabalik po sa takdang oras. Susunod naman po ay ang weekly home learning plan. Ito po ang halimbawa ng ating weekly home learning plan. Nakalagay po dito yung day and time, learning area kung ano po yung subject, learning competency, yung dapat pong pag-aaralan ng ating mga anak, ano po yung kanilang gagawin dito sa learning task, at ano po ang mode of delivery. Ito po ay halimbawa ng isang weekly home learning plan na modular. So sisimula ng bata ang kanyang activities 8 to 9 ng umaga, tapos 9 o'clock to 9.30 ay magkakaroon ng short exercise. At sa Monday, meron lamang siyang isang subject sa umaga at isang subject sa hapon. Ganun din sa ibang mga araw. Sa learning area, makikita kung ano yung mga dapat na subjects na kanyang pag-aaralan sa takdang oras. Nandito din yung mga kakayahan o learning competencies na dapat ay kanyang pag-aaralan at kung paano niya ito mapag-aaralan ay makikita naman ito sa learning task. Huwag kalimutan ang mode of delivery dahil dyan po makikita kung ang activity po ay online or modular. So ito po ay makukuha ninyo every week kasama po ng bagong mga module sa 
kada linggo. Ito naman po ay halimbawa ng isang weekly home learning plan na gamit ang online learning. So makikita po ninyo may mga links po dyan para sa mga video clips at sa mga activities. To ensure that learners are on task and are guided on what they are expected to accomplish within a specific week, teachers shall prepare a weekly home learning plan. Sufficient break time shall be ensured in cases of legal celebrations and holidays, as well as cancellations, suspension of classes due to natural and man-made calamities, adjustments in the time frame for accomplishing learning tasks based on the weekly home learning plan shall be considered accordingly. It is recommended that a learning facilitator or a household partner like parent, guardian, sibling, or other community members considered as a responsible adult should be available to guide and support the learning process of the child at home, as well as provide guidance in accomplishing given home learning tasks. Kaya nga po importante na nasa tabi niya po ang kanyang mga parent, guardian, o kapatid, o kahit anong kahit sino responsible adult habang siya ay nag-aaral gamit ang kanyang mga modules at online learning activities. The learning resources to be used are, but not limited to, the following. Self-learning modules, kaya po yan ang makikita ninyo sa mga envelopes na kukunin niyo po dito sa school. Textbooks, primer lessons, activity sheets, teacher-made video, and other supplementary learning materials. And open educational resources or OERs. Self-learning modules and primer lessons shall be converted into different digital content formats such as video or audio lessons, interactive inclusive electronic SLMs shall be available through the DepEd Learning Resource Portal, DepEd Commons, DepEd Learning Management System, and or different DepEd recognized LMS, such as the Google Classroom. This helps classes to connect remotely, communicate, and stay organized. Sa atin naman po, ang talagang gagamitin natin ay ang tinatawag na Google Classroom. Where feasible, learner, learners may also be provided with printed copies of SLMs in consideration of the allowable screen time by key stage or as a support should there be a power interruption. Yan po ang kagandahan ng ating blended distance learning kasi meron na pong online at meron pa rin pong modular. So kung in kaso po na magkaroon ng power interruption, meron po tayong mga modules na magagamit ng mga bata. Schools may adopt a combination of synchronous and asynchronous online teaching in consideration of the screen time guidelines by age as recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics and World Health Organization, which is as follows. Grades 6 to 8, a maximum of 2 hours daily. For grades 9 to 12, a maximum of 4 hours daily, 2 hours in the morning, and another 2 hours in the afternoon is recommended. Online activities shall be complemented with locomotion, motor sensory, and audio tools, which will support subjects related to performing arts and clubs. Learners shall be provided with activity sheets and be given performance-based tasks to accomplish. Learning facilitators or household partners like parents, guardians, or responsible adults at home shall supervise and monitor the screen time of the learners. The American Optometric Association recommends the 20-20-20 rule, where one needs to look away from the screen every 20 minutes and focus on an object at least 20 feet away for at least 20 seconds. It is also recommended that child should walk away from the screen for at least 10 minutes every hour. Schools must ensure that learning facilitators are oriented on the recommended screen time as well as break time from the screen. Teachers are expected to give assignments and learning tasks. 
the quantity of online activities is not equivalent to quality. Tasks assigned to learners should include those that require them to get up and move away from their devices. Synchronous learning shall be conducted using live webinars, video conferencing, live chat, or instant messaging. Teachers are highly encouraged to use Google Meet to record a specific activity, especially for performance task-based output. Lessons shall be recorded for students who missed the lesson to view later. Synchronous learning in each subject may be done at least once to a maximum of three times per week, depending upon the age and grade level of the learners. For a synchronous platform, Learning Management System, or LMS, or any educational platform shall be utilized for self-paced learning. In our case, we are going to use the Google Classroom. Learning materials may be posted online, and learners may walk through them in their own time, collabor collaborating asynchronously with other learners and with the teacher via online forum, email, and others. Teachers shall present lessons in more than one format within the learner's capacity. This is to address the diverse learning profile of learners when it comes to understanding and perceiving information. If teachers deliver lessons by text, they need to have a video or voice recording with it, too. Likewise, if they deliver lessons via webinar and teleconference, they are advised to have a text version ready as well, including transcripts, slide decks, and other supplementary materials referenced in the lecture. Either in real time or uploaded shall help maintain learning equity for students with bandwidth challenge by giving them opportunity to review materials that they are unable to stream on video. So para naman po ito sa ating mga estudyante na minsan nagkakaroon ng problema sa internet connection. Kaya nga po sinisikap ng ating mga kaguruan na magkaroon ng mga iba't ibang worksheets, iba't ibang task pa, nagre-record ng mga videos para anytime yung mga estudyante natin na hindi makaka-attend sa webinar, online webinar, ay pwede nilang kunin at i-download ang mga files. Lahat po ng ito ay kinuha natin sa DepEd Memorandum DMCI 2020-00162 galing kay Undersecretary Justado M. San Antonio noong July 21, 2020. Gaya na nabanggit, ang ating school ay gagamit ng Google Classroom, Facebook, Google Meet, at Messenger. May kanya-kanya na po kayong mga group chats, bawat section at bawat parents. Dumako naman po tayo sa Google Meet protocol. Ano-ano ang mga dapat sundin kapag nagkakaroon ng Google Meet webinar or meeting, screen-to-screen -screen meeting? Una, come in early. Do not be late. Pag sinabi ng teacher na 8 o'clock, magsisimula kayo, then dapat... Nando na kayo sa meeting room before 8. Be present. Marami po kayong mamimiss, lalo na minsan lang ang ating mga subjects kapag kayo ay absent. Next, try to look good. Magbihis ng naaangkop na kasuotan kapag kayo ay haharap sa camera. Humanap ng isang tahimik na lugar. Find a quiet place kung saan isa-set up ninyo ang inyong study area. Maging magalang o be respectful, lalo na sa ating mga guro at sa ating mga kaklase kapag nasa Google Meet kayo. Makinig ng maayos or listen actively. Put mic on mute and turn off webcam. Kapag meron kayong mga katanungan, use the chat box to ask. Gaya na nasabi, ang webinar o ang session ninyo minsan ay ire-record. Paano naman ang ating group chat protocol? Unang-una, use your complete name for all your account profile. 
wag or iwasang gumamit ng mga code names. Next, adding members to the group is the responsibility of the group administrator. O minsan ito ang inyong mga class advisors. However, there are instances wherein the administrator may delegate unto another group member the task of adding a new participant. Be sure that the message sent is relevant to the entire group. Keep note of the purpose of the chat. If you have something specific to bring up with one person, you are better off sending a separate private message outside of the group. Send consolidated, concise, clear, and targeted message. Do not break your chats into segments. Wag pong putol-putol ang inyong pagsasalita sa chat. Keep the group chat spam-free. Make it a habit to backread previous messages to find out if there is already an answer to the question you want to ask the group. And la sixth, avoid flooding the group chat. If you agree with the statement, please react directly to the message with a thumbs up reaction. Please refrain from sending a separate like button emoji as it increases the number of messages received by each member and may cause disruption. Seventh, avoid using multiple punctuation marks, GIFs, and casual abbreviations. And last, be considerate of the time in sending messages. Please don't send out a message at an unearthly hours. Did you get it, our dear students and parents? Now, let us have an online class simulation. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Sheffield. Okay, so are you ready for your class for today? Yes. Uh, were you able to receive your weekly home learning plan? Yes. Can I see your weekly home learning plan? Okay, what does it say there? 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, wake up, make up your bed, eat breakfast, and get ready for an awesome day. Did you do Nine that? 9 o'clock. Yes. Okay, so what else is in there? 9 o'clock to 9.30, have a short exercise. Meditation, bonding with family. Did you do that also? Yes. Okay, so after that? So for Monday, 9.30 to 11.30, it's 21st century literature of the Philippines. Okay, so it is our class. So after my class, your next class will be? Education sa pagpapakatao. Okay, so that will be in the afternoon. So we are now going to start our class in the 21st century literature. So allow me to share my screen first. Good morning. Uh, good morning, good morning, Sheffield. Okay, so are you ready for your class for today? Yes. Uh, were you able to receive your weekly home learning plan? Yes. Can I see your weekly home learning plan? Okay, what does it say there? 
8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, wake up, make up your bed, eat breakfast, and get ready for an awesome day. Did you do nine that? 9 o'clock. Yes. Okay, so what else is in there? 9 o'clock to 9.30, have a short exercise, meditation, bonding with family. Did you do that also? Yes. Okay, so after that? So for Monday, 9.30 to 11.30, it's 21st century literature of the Philippines. Okay, so it is our class. So after my class, your next class will be? Education sa pagpapakatao. Okay, so that will be in the afternoon. So we are now going to start our class in the 21st century literature. So allow me to share my screen first. Okay, were you able to see my presentation now? Not yet. Not yet. So just wait, it is still loading. Okay, do you have it with you right now? Can you see it yes. already? Okay, so I'll start my presentation and we are going to have our class for today. So, first let us begin our day with a prayer. Let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, the loving Father, thank you for this day that you have given to each and every one of us. May you continue to bless us and keep us safe from harm. This we ask you, Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, Sheffield, our squad goals for today. We are going to learn what is literature. You're going to define what literature is. And you're going to differentiate literature, the big L, from literature, the small L. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so let's begin. Literature is a very big um, body of knowledge. It is divided into two kinds of literature. You have the oral and the written. Under the written, you have the poetry and the prose. For prose, you have fiction and nonfiction. You can see here in the chart that fiction has three categories, the short stories, the novels, and the novelette. While the nonfiction, it will include the biographies, autobiographies, essays, and creative nonfiction. For poetry, you have three kinds. You have the narrative, lyrical, and dramatic. For narrative, you have the epics and ballads. Lyrical, you have the odes, lyric, elegy, and the song. And then for the dramatic, you have tragedy and comedy, metrical tales, and metrical romances. Any questions, Sheffield? None. Okay. Now, because you don't have a question, I have a question. What is the difference between the big L literature and the small L literature? What do you think? I'll give you an example. Um, literature with a big L, we have Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. While literature with a small L, you have the Wattpads. The literature with a big L is the Britain... Uh, written yes. material, uh, written materials or books that is way back 
okay. or what you are in the past. While the smallest creature or small L is what we are now in the present time. Okay, that could be one possible uh, definition of the literature with the big L and literature with the small L. Now allow me to continue. So literature with a small L, it is broadly anything that is written, such as novels, poems, plays, and articles, while written with popular appeal. So you're right. These are the books that is uh, written now, not at the present time. So we have, like, for example, Twilight. Um, we have uh, the different Wattpads, uh, Divergent Trilogy, things like that. While... The literature with the big L, these are classics that have been read over and over again or have been acclaimed throughout the years. Works that are considered exemplary because they provide knowledge and understanding of the world and man. So that is the difference between the literature of the big L literature and the small L literature. Is it already clear, Sheffield? Yes. Okay. So as we continue our discussion in 21st century literature, you have to take note of the following terms. First, you have the canon or canonical literature. These are list of books that are being prescribed to be read by students like you in the different schools and universities. The National Artist for Literature it is the award being given by the Philippines to those who have exemplified uh, writing in terms of literature, a Filipino writer. While the Nobel Prize in Literature is a yearly award being given to a writer, uh, any writer around the world, and Pulitzer Prize is for uh, American writers who have exemplified in writing on that given year, while the Man Booker Prize is for the United Kingdom. Is it all clear, Sheffield? Yes. Okay. So some of the writers that we are going to discuss, because 21st Literature of the Philippines and the World, first quarter, we are going to concentrate in the Philippines and in our region, Mimaropa. You have the following uh, writers. For Mindoro, you have the Haambahan and the writer Malu Levisa Jacob. For Marinduque, you have Paz La Torena, Romblon, okay? And then Palawan. So uh, later on, I, before we end our class, I'm going to give you this file. It's a PDF file, okay? And this is for our asynchronous lesson, meaning to say you can go over this material any time of the day, okay? We don't need to meet screen to screen. And this PDF file will contain different activities. Like, for example, I have here your quiz. I have here your um, formative assessment and other videos that will supplement our discussion for today, what is literature. And I know for a fact that you also have your modules with you. Am I right, Sheffield? Yes. Okay, so what all you need to do is to download the PDF that I am going to send in your GC and then click on the different items that you have here, okay? And it will lead you to the activity. So before we end, I want you to answer this one, get the one half crosswise, okay? Answer this uh, formative assessment. Three new facts I learned. Two ahas, or realization that popped into my mind. And one big question that I still have. I want you to write it in a one half crosswise and then do your selfie. Do not cover your face. Do your selfie and post it in our Padlet activity. Are we all clear, Sheffield? Yes. Okay, let me see you first. Okay. So I guess it is already time. Uh, you prepare for your next class, which is ESP, and we are going to meet 
according to your schedule in your weekly home learning plan. Bye. Bye. So we hope that everything is clear for the online class simulation. Are there any questions? So for your questions, you can post it in your respective group chats per section, and your advisors will be willing to answer any queries that you have. So as for now, see you in class come October 25, October 5. Okay, that's all folks. Bye.